Hello friends. So today we are going to cover most important questions for your SEBI Grade A exam, right? And the topic for today is depository receipts. So guys, do subscribe to our channel if you like this video. Now question number one: IDR is a depository receipt created by domestic depository in India against the underlying equity shares of a company outside India. So you must be knowing that IDRs are an instrument which are used by a foreign company to raise capital in India. They are just like your ADRs and GDRs. So ADRs are issued in USA, GDRs are issued outside USA in any country. So likewise, IDRs are issued in India. So you are given a few statements. So you have to see which of them is correct and which of them are not, right? So first of all, statement number one: They were introduced in the year 2010. So this statement is wrong. Why? Because IDRs were issued in the year 2004 through Companies Rules 2004. Companies Rules 2004. The rules regarding issue of IDRs. Next statement. Statement two. They are denominated in Indian rupees. Yes, this statement is right. So like ADRs are issued in dollars. So likewise, Indian depository receipts IDRs they are denominated in Indian rupees. Next is statement three. It says American Express was the first company to come out with the issue of IDRs. So this statement is wrong. Why? Because Standard Chartered PLC, Standard Chartered PLC, it is a global bank. So it this was the first company to come out with the issue of IDRs. So it was not American Express. It was Standard Chartered PLC. So as you can see. Only statement two is correct, right? So correct option is B. Only statement two. Moving on to the next question. Question number two. Rule thirteen of the Companies Registration of Foreign Companies Rules 2014 deals with the public issue of IDRs. It talks about the eligibility conditions for issuing foreign company to issue IDRs. Which of the below mentioned conditions is Incorrect, right? So, Rule Thirteen of the Companies Registration of Foreign Companies Rules, two thousand fourteen, they specify some eligibility conditions which an issuer needs to fulfill before they can go ahead with the issue of IDRs. So, let us see which of the following is incorrect. So, first statement says its pre-issue paid-up capital and free reserves are at least US dollar fifty million, right? And it has a minimum average market capitalization during the last three years in its parent country of at least US dollar hundred million. So this statement is correct as per Rule Thirteen. So the issuing company needs to have pre-issue paid-up capital and free reserves of at least fifty million and minimum average market cap of at least hundred million during the last three years. So this is right. Now second statement B. It has been continuously trading on a stock exchange in its parent or home country for at least five immediate preceding years. Now this statement is wrong. Why? Because the shares of the company needs to trade on the stock exchange of its home country not for immediately preceding five years but for immediately preceding three years. So here the time period is wrong. So that is why statement B is incorrect. Now next statement C. It has a track record of distributable profits in terms of Section 123 of the Act. So, which Act? Here they are talking about Companies Act, right? So, Companies Act 2013 for at least three out of immediately preceding five years. So, distributable profits basically here means dividends. So, the company needs to have a track record of distributing dividends according to Section 123 of the Companies Act. For at least three out of immediately preceding five years. So this statement is right as per Rule 13 of the Companies Rules. And statement D, it fulfills such other eligibility criteria as may be laid down by the SEBI from time to time. So this is also right because the issuing company needs to fulfill all such criteria which the SEBI may specify any time. Moving to the next question, question number three, the process of filing application before SEBI. to seek permission to issue idrs is given in rule 13 of the companies registration of foreign companies rules 
गिवन बिलो आर फ्यू स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ फाइलिंग एप्लीकेशन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट सो सम स्टेटमेंट आर गिवन रिगार्डिंग द एप्लीकेशन फाइलिंग प्रोसेस विच इज गिवन इन रूल थर्टीन ऑफ द कंपनी रूल टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन सो एज पर द रूल्स एन एप्लीकेशन नीड्स टू बी फाइल्ड विद सेबी एट लीस्ट नाइंटी डेज बिफोर द डेट ऑफ इशू सो द इशूंग कंपनी नीड्स टू फाइल एन एप्लीकेशन सीकिंग परमिशन फ्रॉम द सेबी टू इशू आइडियाज एट लीस्ट नाइंटी डेज बिफोर द डेट ऑफ इशू देन आफ्टर दैट सेबी कैन आस्क फॉर इंफॉर्मेशन क्लैरिफिकेशन एक्सप्लेनेशन राइट फ्रॉम द इशूइंग कंपनी विद इन थर्टी डेज ऑफ रिसीविंग एप्लीकेशन सो सेबी कैन आस्क फॉर एन इन्फॉर्मेशन क्लैरिफिकेशन बट विद इन थर्टी डेज नॉट बियॉन्ड दैट ऑल्सो सेबी नीड्स टू डिस्पोज ऑफ द एप्लीकेशन विद इन सिक्सटी डेज ऑफ रिसिप्ट ऑफ एप्लीकेशन राइट सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ एप्लीकेशन सो लेट एस सी द स्टेटमेंट वन बाय वन स्टेटमेंट वन एन एप्लीकेशन फॉर सीकिंग परमिशन to issue idr should be made to the sebi at least 60 days prior to the opening date of the issue so as we have just discussed this statement is wrong why because the time period is not 60 days rather it is 90 days so this is wrong statement number 2 sebi can call for further information explanation and clarification from applicant within 30 days so as we have just discussed this statement is right sebi has a period of 30 days to ask for any classifications and 30 days from the receipt of application so when sebi receives application so within 30 days from the receipt of application and statement 3 sebi needs to dispose the application within 45 days of receipt so this is wrong why as we have just seen it is not 45 days it is 60 days so sebi needs to dispose the application within 60 days of the receipt of application so statement 1 and 3 are wrong and statement 2 is correct so they have asked you which of the following statements are correct so only statement 2 is correct right so friends we have also discussed this topic on our telegram group so we regularly conduct quizzes and post questions on the telegram group so make sure you join our telegram group the link for the group is mentioned in the description below now next question question 4 chapter 10 of sebi icdr regulations icdr means issue of capital and disclosure requirements so icdr regulations 2009 they contain provisions regarding issue of idrs given below are few statements regarding conditions for issue of idrs which of the following statements are incorrect so as you know sebi issues various regulations from time to time one of those regulations is icdr regulations 2009 which are important from an exam point of view as well so chapter 10 of these regulations they deal with the issue of idrs so these regulations mention some conditions regarding issue so basically the conditions state that the minimum issue size should be 50 crore rupees right the minimum application amount should be 20000 rupees and at least 50% of the issue should be allotted to qibs so what are qibs qibs are qualified institutional buyers so basically your mutual fund companies insurance companies pension funds so these all are called in qualified institutional buyers so these are the conditions so let us see statement 1 issue size should be at least 100 crore rupees so this is wrong I, as i have just told you it is not 100 crores it is 50 crore rupees now next statement number 2 minimum application amount should be 20000 rupees yes so this statement is right so if a person wants to apply to an idr issue so the minimum application amount is 20000 rupees so obviously as you can see small investors can find it difficult to invest in idrs due to the large application amount now next statement 3 at least 50% of the issue should be allotted to qibs on proportionate basis right so this statement is correct as i just told you at least 50% of the issue should be allotted to qibs so only statement 1 is incorrect in this case so correct option is d only statement 1 now moving on question number 5 idr is a depository receipt created by a domestic depository in india against the underlying equity shares of a company outside india it is an instrument used by foreign companies to raise capital in india and was introduced in india in the year 
which of the following statements is correct about IDRs? So out of these four statements, only one statement is correct. So you have to identify which is the correct statement, right? So let us see the number of underlying equity shares offered in a financial year through IDR offerings shall not exceed 35% of the post issue number of equity shares of the company. So as per rule 13 of the company's registration of foreign companies rules 2014, the number of equity shares offered in a financial year through IDR offering shall not exceed 25%. It is not 35, it is 25% of the post issue number of equity shares of the company. So let's suppose a company has 75,000 equity shares before issue of IDR and the ratio of issuing IDR is, is 1 is to 5 which means for every IDR the company needs to have 5 underlying equity shares. So let's suppose the company wants to issue 5,000 IDRs. So accordingly it needs to have 25,000 underlying equity shares to back those IDRs. So the post issue equity shares of the company will become 1 lakh. So 25,000 is 25% of 1 lakh. So this is the maximum limit. So a company in this case cannot issue more than 5,000 IDRs because then it will violate the limit, right? Now statement B, partial fungibility of IDRs in a financial year to the extent of 20% of the IDRs originally issued is allowed. Now before answering this question, you need to understand what is fungibility. So fungibility means the conversion of ideas into underlying equity shares. So for issuing ideas, a company needs to back those ideas with the equity shares. So the equity shares can be existing equity shares also or the company can issue new equity shares also to back those ideas. So fungibility means conversion of ideas into equity shares. Now this fungibility is two way. So ideas can be converted into equity shares and equity shares can also be converted into IDRs. So it is two way fungibility. And why partial? Partial because there is limit to the conversion, right? So this limit is not 20%, it is 25%. So according to SEBI ICDR regulations 2009, ICDR regulations 2009, the limit is 25% and not 20%. So this statement is also incorrect. The first one was also incorrect. Now statement third, the issuing company needs to obtain in principle listing permission from one or more stock exchanges having nationwide trading terminals in India. So this statement is right because to list an IDR, the company needs to obtain permission from stock exchange in which the company wants to list the IDR. So listing permission is required. So this statement is Right and last statement section 350 of the Companies Act 2013 empowers the central government to make rules regarding issue of ideas. So this statement is wrong because it is not section 350 but section 390 which empowers the central government to make rules regarding issue of ideas. So the correct option is option C. Now question 6. So I will not tell you the answer of this question. This question is to be solved by you. So you need to mention the answer of this question in the comment section below. Then I will post the correct answer to this question. So let us read the question. Which of the below mentioned bodies is not the governing body for Indian depository receipts? So Indian depository receipts are governed by various regulatory bodies. So one out of these four is not the correct option. So you need to identify which of these bodies is not the governing body. So your options are SEBI, Ministry of Finance. Ministry of Corporate Affairs and the Reserve Bank of India. So mention your answers in the comment section below. Then I'll post the correct option. So guys, if you learned anything new from this video, then do hit the subscribe button to get more updates and notifications. Thank you.